Hello, everyone. Forever who's listening, this is going to be my personal podcast commentary on Batman and Robin in honor of its 20th anniversary. Whether you're listening to it on its 20th or after, this is for its 20th. It's the Bat logo morph right now. Probably the worst Batman film, really. I mean, this just killed Batman for eight years until the Dark Knight trilogy, but... I mean... We all know how it is, but I like that logo. It's back to, like, the Tim Burton logo there. And then look, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He has top billing over George Clooney's Batman, which should tell you something about both Batman in this and Arnold Schwarzenegger's ego at the time. Also, what time period? I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger gets top billing, what? Before any Terminator sequels are made? Alicia Silverstone, it must be the 90s. Love the music, though. This background is actually used for the Smallville Season 8 promos, but you get the Bat logo and the Nightwing logo, and together, it's Batman and Robin. Oh look, it's like Batman Forever's opening. Bat nipples are back. Whoa! A badass! And it's not Ben Affleck's nude scene in the Ultimate Edition, it's badass shots interesting yeah yeah a new Batmobile has a disco ball inside of it what do you know dun dun Oh, they changed the logo again. It's kind of like the old logo, but all black instead of the yellow emblem. Go figure. He's going to be like, I want a car. Chicks dig the car. He's going to be like, this is why Superman works alone. At least I have an open back cave, though. That's kind of cool. Poor Alfred, he has to cancel the pizza right now. So there's a Batman logo on the floor that nobody can see. I mean, unless you're like on the ceiling or have like a GoPro with an arrow shot or maybe a drone, you know? And then there's going to be a motorcycle. And guess what? There's going to be a Nightwing emblem on top of the Batman. Because this is all about Batman and Robin, of course. Kind of cool, though. Even though it has a cape and there's nipples, it's kind of like the Nightwing New 52 suit, but like almost 20 years earlier. It's kind of cool. Poor Alfred. He's sick in this. Something's wrong. I apologize for the mic. I'm just sitting down. I was standing. Whether you can hear my voice more clearly, loud, if it's echoey, I apologize. Whoa, we're having him go out of the Batcave. Okay, Commissioner Gordon has, like, a commissioner's hat now, and it's through a TV screen. Like, pre-FaceTime, but... Yeah, this is going to be the Adam West Batman, and it's weird because the films took the same trajectory as the comics. First starting darker. Now, Returns is more like the 90s comics, but still darker. Forever is kind of like the 40s and 50s, and now we've reached like the Adam West before you get to the 70s and 80s, like the Dark Knight trilogy. The Man Who Fell and a little bit of Dark Knight Rises and stuff. Batman Year One. Oh, well, Mr. Freeze. It's Arnold. He's going to be like, we'll kill the dinosaur. The Ice Age. Get down. Do it now. All I think of him is in True Lies, which is like, Dana, Dana, grab my hand, Dana. <clears throat> Man, my throat hurts. Okay, enough of it, Arnold. It's just as much damage into a throat as Christian Bell's voice. Iceman Comet. Forgot about the ice puns in this. Mercy. Oh, man, he has the hockey team from hell. You know, two things this hockey team makes me think of. A little bit of Little Nicky, but it reminds me of, like, the hockey players from Dogma. I don't know why. That's random, I know. A diamond. Oh, he's at the diamond. That's one giant-ass gun. 
there is only one absolute. Everything freezes. And then you're gonna have him crash all badass, but then George Clooney's gonna be like, hey, freeze, I'm Batman, while bobbling his head. Cool little slide. I uh, Just too bad you can tell it's Bruce Wayne. I really wish we got to see him fight more. I mean, he gets physical in this, and he does have some good fights, but it's a little bit more cartoony, man. Like, Bat Forever has some good fighting, and so did Michael Keaton's. I miss Michael Keaton. Whoa. That motorcycle just crashed through a wall in a perfect Nightwing emblem. What are the odds of that, man? Gee, that gun landed weird. Now, for anybody wondering where this is right now, it's in the museum. Kill the heroes! It's basically Adam West's show, but without the pal Bam and Wham. Hockey team from hell versus the dynamic duo. Will they get out of it today? Tune in next week, children, and see if they survive the hockey team from hell. Of course they will. They're going to have ice skates magically appear out of their feet. It's crazy. Oh, this is going to be a long commentary, guys, but at least it's better than Halle Berry's Catwoman or Shaquille O'Neal still or The Giver or Ubel. Uh, any Ubel film, really. It's just sad that Joel Schumacher did this. You think with the Lost Boys, the Client, and Time to Kill him, fan of the opera, that his films would have been darker for Batman. Damn. This is what happens when you do it for a franchise and to sell more toys. Some good fighting, though. Probably make it more brutal and real now, but it's not bad. At least you can see what they're actually doing. Dun, dun. I wish I had that. Ice skates with boots. I wonder if they have rollerblades with that too. Okay, now they're just playing hockey with a damn diamond. Diamonds are forever. Maybe it's just a sign not to do stuff with ice. Not like Die Another Day, a hundred times better than Batman or Robin, but it's another movie that involves ice that supposedly kind of killed what was going on already for a series. Damn. Poor fat guy. He threw him up. Arnold, he just tossed him up to get his gun back. Man, I wish he had a pistol. Like, I know there's a hand cannon he's, like, this big. It would have been cool if he had Mr. Freeze have two pistols or something. Like, the two hand freezers, like, in the anime series. I mean, he has a hand freezer, but I mean, two of them would be cool. <laughs> Here it is. Actually, it was a giant asteroid that killed the dinosaurs, but okay, we're going with that. I mean, there's only like seven Ice Age films, and there should have just been one. Now it's in a collapse. I do like this rocket part. Now, it's not going to turn Gotham into a crater, but I love that scene where they basically use the doors as like freaking air surfboards, and it blows up. This is such a cool image. And then he's just like, Cowabunga! Makes me in the mood to watch Ninja Turtles. Off topic, best films to watch with pizza, Ninja Turtles trilogy, and Mortal Kombat from 1995. No better movie to watch with pizza than those. Oh my god, he's gonna catapult himself on there? Boom, launched. Another ass shot, what's up with this movie? He has a cool little vehicle. That'd be a cool toy, man. I can imagine that thing shooting out, little spikes. Put those little things in there, like little Nerf gun things. Shoot at the Batmobile. This is like, say what you will about a Batman film, but Batman and Robin is by far the best toy commercial made in the history of anything. History of toy commercials. It's sad, though. I'm watching this on Blu-ray, and Returns and Robin have this probably the most clear picture and it's sad because to me they're the weakest. I like one and three. Like why doesn't Batman 89 look this good? It's the bad one that looks this clear. What's up with that? I know it's a more recent film so to speak. It's not as old but still. Batman Returns looked wonderful and Batman Forever had 
The same picture quality as Batman 1989. What's up with that? And it's from 1995. I said 1989. Okay, I'm going to be honest. You're listening to this podcast, any young soul who's made it this far. And, wow, the CGI is really aged badly. I haven't seen this in a while. Uh, it's 11.40 right now, so I'm a little bit sleepy. So if I start slurring my words or just not making sense or mumbling, it's because I'm tired, not because I'm drunk. Although, this film would make one want to be drunk. <laughs> Feel it coming. Feel the heat. Oh man, Cobra from Sylvester Stallone is such a good movie. Man, this says something if I'm thinking about other movies during this. Damn, Robin's still holding on. He's like, has one of those little suction things, like from Mission Impossible. This is cool. Mr. Freeze has some type of gliding thing. He's gonna have, like, little gliding wings. It's kind of like Spider-Man 3. A cool opening action scene just surrounded by bad stuff. Some good moments, but overall, just a, what what went on in the series type of moments. Should have been better with Val Kilmer and, and Chris O'Donnell, but what can I say? Val Kilmer chose a better film with The Saint. It's sad that people remember George Clooney more than Val Kilmer. At least Val Kilmer actually sounded like Michael Keaton when he was Batman. George Clooney just sounds like George Clooney. Oh man, it kind of makes me miss him as Seth Gecko from Dust Till Dawn watching this. Watch the first tap, here we go. Best moment in the movie. Boom, boom, these doors, the surfboards. And then, oh, trailer shot, trailer shot, great. Oh man, everything's computerized in this. That's one thing, the Schumacher did use a lot more CGI scenes. Not bad, it's just that now that it's 20 years old, you get to really tell how dated this movie feels. Land on him. Yeah, that's cool. He's gonna surf on the roof. Hey, the Ninja Turtles... The Ninja Turtles are gonna be mad, man. Ninja Turtles... Hey, the Ninja Turtles are going to be mad. Dude. Tell you what, though. Gotham does not like the OnStar commercials. You know it's a bad movie when the OnStar commercials in the early 2000s is a better Batman movie than this? I think it's because they mix the best of the Schumacher and two Burton films into one. You're like, Robin, wait! And Robin's gonna go and get frozen. It's like the opposite of like, Trinity, ho! Kinda has a Batman Returns vibe here, though, in the snow. Man, they really could have played around with Winter more. I got him, you don't. Man, you gotta love the Arnold puns in this. <coughs> like you didn't have enough puns already. Ha 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 ha. I'll try. Now, why wasn't Batman frozen like that earlier? I love the imagery and set design, though. That's something I miss in the older films. Now you can tell it's a studio. Now, if I had a Batman movie, I'd totally have him have gloves that are heated and just start like, 
warming it up. Kind of like the shot gloves. Oh my god, that's another thing that could be a toy. A little laser thing. Imagine if it had like a red plastic thing that like you put batteries in, like double A batteries. Probably did make it into a toy for all I knew. Now here, Poison Ivy is going to be a mixture of like a Selena Kyle and Ever Enigma scenario. Oh man, there's a computerized like iguana there? Okay, I did not notice that before. I mean, I have some reservations about this film, but I did not notice that before. Yeah, they pretty much... I guess they're going to have Project Gilgamesh. Man, I want to see Poison Ivy just done right in a movie. I think the best Poison Ivy is by far the animated series. Probably Arkham. Uh, Arkham Asylum. She's in Arkham City, but, but Arkham Knight, yeah. My darlings! John Glover's in this. Mr. Uh, Lionel Luther, Lex Luther's daddy from Smallville. It's funny because he plays the voice of Edward Nigma the Riddler in Batman the Animated Series. That's funny. Project Gilgamesh. Now that's a cool Easter egg. It actually has it from the comics. Too bad everything else about Bane isn't like the comics. Yeah, Bane's origin. Bane's just a mindless buffoon in this. He's pretty much to... This interpretation of Bane in this film is to the character of Bane of what Wade Wilson from X-Men Origins Wolverine was to the character of Deadpool. It's just insulting. Man, life takes some funny turns. If you don't stop around and look, you may miss it. Meaning, you may go from, like, Batman 1989 to 1997's Batman and Robin. Wow. Well, he has a luchador mask, that's for certain. Although it kind of be inappropriate for kids listening to him, but if you're going to listen to this, you're probably going to be above 20. He's kind of dressed as like a Luchadora and a Gimp had a kid. See, kids, this is why you don't take steroids. Yeah, Tom Hardy didn't really have any competition to top. And the same goes for Christian Bell's Batman compared to George Clooney. He didn't really have that much competition against him. Man, everybody, the way they talk in the Schumacher Batmans. How did you get from Chad Nicholson and Michael Keaton to this? My throat hurts. I should be quiet and watch the movie. I don't know. I want to make it throughout the entirety of this, but this may be an abridged commentary. Only because my throat's hurting and there's only so much of this movie I can take. But in some sick way, without this being such a bad movie, we may have never have gotten the Dark Knight trilogy. Plus, I think Julie Madison's her name. You actually have a girlfriend from the comics for Bruce Wayne's love interest, but she's barely in the film. Which either says something about the film or something about George Clooney. I don't know. Between that and the ass shots and bat nipples, you never know.
this is crazy. He's gonna totally pull a Christopher Walken out of a Thurman here. No, holy crap. Well, I guess it's like pushing Selena Kyle out of a window. Great poison ivy. Eat in a bucket. At least George Clooney has the whole Batman thing going down in the trench coat. Oh, whoa, Arnold is Victor Freeze. It's just like the animated series. Man, this movie really could have benefited from just having Mr. Freeze by himself with, like, Ferris Boyle as a villain. I just want to have a sympathetic, dramatic Batman film. Like, I know they're going to try to do action, but just do a serious human drama. I know it would be a different change of pace, but it would be a really well done movie. Worth remembering. It's something that stands out. Oh, the panther suit from Batman Forever. I just noticed that. That's cool. So much for them being all destroyed, huh? Well, this hallway right here looks just like where they kept the key master and Matrix Reloaded. Mm -hmm. I really love the more human moments to Bruce and Alfred in this film. Too bad the rest of the movie wasn't like that. God damn, George Clooney cannot stop bobbling his head. This isn't Batman Forever. Bruce knows something's up. Flashback scene everybody's first time falling. I like how we get a lot more of Alfred as a father figure in this, something that the later films will explore a bit. For some reason, John Glover in this reminds me a bit of Core text from Crash Bandicoot. Uh oh, something's coming out from the ground. The Dark Knight Rise. Oh no, it's just Poison Ivy. Holy shit, what happened to her? Your girlfriend versus when she becomes her your ex. Before or after marriage, but reverse.
Or it could be like her when you meet her versus her when you get to know her. I don't know. I know what she was trying to do in my Thurman here for the performance. It's just a shame. I don't know. It didn't work for me personally, but I, I get the approach. But eh. Pretty bad when Arnold Schwarzenegger actually is the best part of, as far as the villains from Mr. Freeze and it's a very badly miscast Mr. Freeze. Oh, he's poisoned. He ate the green blow pop. Man, that's cold. It's funny because now it's like Edward Nigma. I have like the whole red hair, green, green color thing. Oh my god, look at Bane. Oh my god. Why, what the hell's going on in this movie? Although, cool fact, guys. Mr. Snow Cone, the Snow Cone Factory, the Mr. I Ice Christmas, Mr. White Christmas, whatever the hell. That level is in the first Lego Batman game, which is funny. Come on, Zing, do it now. Yeah, do it now. Do it. <clears throat> okay, it's enough Arnold voice. Oh my god, Vivica Fox. Wow, this must have been after Independence Day, but before Independence Day Resurgence. Sadly, I think I'd rather watch this film over Independence Day Resurgence. Not to put down another film, but yeah. Man, another blue guy. It's like Blue Man Group in Dodger Manhattan. Damn, even as Mr. Freeze, Arnold Schwarzenegger is still smoking his cigars. I would too if I made a shitload of money and had more billing uh, than Batman, so yeah. A disco ball full of diamonds. That's a freezing engine. But it's cool. He has a little panel, like it's a TV dinner in the freezer, but I love this whole Nora Freeze thing. The super fantastic musical, yeah. <laughs> to complete my research. <clears throat> I like this. Too bad it wasn't more like the animated series, but you can definitely tell the influence it had. Maybe this movie also suffered from the story and everything. It might have just had too many characters like Bow Returns. Or the other one sure had a lot of characters, but it really divided the time between Riddler and Two-Face. And if not, to hell with them. So he's going to say to his wife that they can't be together. I was up with the Mustangs in front of Bruce Wayne's Manor. Oh my god, it's clueless. Alicia Silverstone's in the movie. It's going to be Alfred's niece, not Commissioner Gordon's daughter. I like her chemistry with Chris O'Donnell in this, but damn, why did that have to mess with Batgirl that way? Barbara Wilson, not Barbara Gordon. Not a redhead either. But I do like how they have the mask with the motorcycle kind of like the 60s show for a small bit, but it's a shame they didn't keep the cowl on longer. I have the, the 
you see it coming. So not every day it's just <laughs> What? She's looking for Alfred Pennyworth. Okay, good. He's like, it's her uncle. <laughs> Michael Guff was a very good Alfred. I liked his Alfred a lot. It's a guest family? George Clinton's like, I don't know. Oh, wow, they're by a pond that's actually... It's, it's Charles Xavier's School for the Young and Gifted. Oxbridge, not Oxford, but Oxbridge Academy. She's into bikes. For Richard Grayson, this would be like if you knew a girl, if, you, if, if you're a Star Wars fan, she'd be like, she's into Star Wars. She wants to dress as Slave Leia, or she's like, uh, you say, I love you, and she's like, I know. Like, holy shit. So she likes bikes here. Oh, we can't have anybody stay with the extracurricular stuff of Batman, and there's not enough room in a giant mansion. They really just recycled the score from the previous one. That's how fast they made this movie. I mean, at least Batman Returns had a kind of different turn on the same score by Danny Elfman. Makes you wonder though how this film would be with Prince music. Now this would have been cool if they tied in like Alfred being like British Secret Service or something. Wow, I forgot how internet looked back then. You've got mail. Speaking of which, I'd rather be watching You've Got Mail with Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan compared to this. That's how boring this commentary is for this film. I'm going to give you some water. Listen to the movie if you can. Shit, my throat. Okay. I wanted to make it through this, but my throat's hurting, so we're going to fast forward. She talks to Alfred and stuff. It's okay. Oh my gosh, she's sneaking out right now? She's not as innocent as she looks. Now that's a different type of theme. I think Robin notices, or not right away. Oh, he notices when she comes back. I don't know, he might now. Daytime in Gotham. I saw that a little bit of forever, but it kind of reminds me of the 89 Batman, but there weren't 60s clothing instead of 80s. Gotham Gertie. That's actually Bob Kane's, was, it was Bob Kane's wife at the time, which is kind of cool. She was also a Gossip Gertie in forever, and she was a one man. A bit, She was the one person talking about uh, Penguin and Bat Returns. Cool shot, but gosh, they spend a lot of money on guys that are statues, like statues of like giant Greek people. Pick a star follower. I'm gonna fast forward this. Poison Ivy pretty much gets mad, and as an Asian guy ends up saying, "Dirty fighter, dirty fighter." Later on in the movie, she's talking about saving the wildlife, and there's a ball, and then she's gonna start talking. And apparently nobody hears her talking to herself. God, this is just a step down. Oh, this is a sad moment here. Mr. Freeze watching his wedding video. Very emotional. He cries a tear and it freezes. That's how I felt during this whole movie. Somebody interrupted him. 
He freezes him for interrupting. That's what I'm like when somebody says this film's better than The Dark Knight. It's like, I hate it when they talk during the movies. Ah. Such a sad moment, though. If I sound different, it's because I'm taking a break. One more dime. Now he's going to see the diamond, Bruce Wayne's little charity event. Very nice. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Here's another drum scene with a weird orange roof. Kind of like the circus scene in Forever, but it's going to be weird with a whole bunch of gorillas and like weird tie-dye dudes. You know, I wouldn't want to live in this Gotham City, but for very different reasons than any other Gotham City. Oh, that's kind of cool. Senator Patrick Leahy is in this. Guy who's also uh, featured in uh, Dark Knight. He was in Dark Knight Rises, Wayne board member. And he was also uh, one of the people in uh, Batman Superman. Why did they put nipples on the suit? Man, Pat Hingle does not look like he wants to be in this movie. They didn't give him much to do in these films. Well, I have to say two things. Without this film, you would not have the Dark Knight trilogy. And we got the awesome Batman on Film.com site, so I have to say that's two positives from this. Oh, the, add number three. The Smashing Pumpkins song on the soundtrack of Lazy Eye by Goo Goo Dolls. Bone Thugs in Harmony, Look Into My Eyes. Fun For Me by Maloko, Moner, etc., etc. Soundtrack, another great positive from this film. It's a testament that even a bad, crappy film can spawn a terrific soundtrack, you know what I mean? About to have that infamous scene for those watching. Let's just say it's going to involve something where don't leave home without it. But not like in the way that was said in 89. More like there's a bat fucking credit card about to appear. There's a weird dance. This apes dance and I'll wear that eyes. It's kind of like the makeup of the earlier Planet of the Apes, but more disturbing like a King Kong film. You know, like King Kong versus Godzilla. It's like all purple. I tell you one thing, guys and girls, I may have to watch Batman Begins after this to get over this film. And not because it's good, it's because it's the opposite of good. I don't know, right now, like, I have, I have feelings about this film, but right now it's biggest sin for me is that it's kind of boring compared to what we have. For some reason, this film seems more dated and just, just more awful than it was back then, 20 years later, than, say, yesterday when we had Batman Returns 25th anniversary. That film actually stands up pretty well, even though it is dated. And so does 89 Batman, even with the Prince music. This film is just, I don't know what this is. I, I, Batman Forever started what was this film, really. Like, it still had the elements that this film has, just not as much, it was more dark. I'd rather watch Batman Forever. At least it has freaking uh, Val Kilmer and, and Holy Rusted Metal Batman and freaking Kiss from a Rose by Seal. This is just like, uh... It's a weird dance number here. Man, everybody in Gotham reminds me of those fake people in the Bruce Wayne party. Like... They're always like, oh, it's Bruce Wayne, and it's like, ah. And I'm like thinking, like, Christian Bell, where he's just like, to all you phonies out there, to all you two-faced sycophantic suck-ups who smile through, uh, through your teeth at me, please leave. Get out. The party's over. I don't know why. They just remind me of those type of people. Which is why I'm glad they had that line in Batman Begins, because I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> Pheromone dust. 
Now they're gonna have the boys fighting over a girl. Uh, I guess that tends to happen. But luckily, Batman's not gonna lose that much focus. It's probably been better for a solo Batman from that Poison Ivy. And you're gonna have the Alfred uh, character, Alfred Pennyworth, be the word, uh, the word of reason, you know? Whoa, I bet $8,000. Oh, it's at 15. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, bad credit card. Good through forever. A whole Batman forever pun. Never leave a cake without it. Boom! Finally somebody crashes party. Mr. Freeze. You know, here's another indicator. It's pretty bad when you start rooting for Mr. Freeze more than Batman. Chill. Come here, that blind Hollywood. Yeah. Whoa, bad grapple. Some good fighting here. I like where he punches a guy and he's just like, good night. I'm surprised nobody's done a spoof of this with Mr. Freeze and the way the suits are made. You know what I mean? Oh, he used a frisbee as a cartoon sound. Kind of makes me have flashbacks of Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze. For anybody watching out there, it's at the 46 minute uh, 50 mark now. This is at 42 minutes. Again, this is in a British commentary. My throat was hurting and I had to shorten some parts because I messed up. But. I gotta love the Arnold puns. Ooh. Clover. Oh, Clover. I haven't seen this movie in about five years. And last time it was on TNT. I kind of wish we got to see Batman and Robin fight together. I mean, you see them fight in the same room, but I mean, like, literally fight together like in the Arkham games or like the anime series. But we're about to get some cool car chase here. Now, they're going to ride in the side of a giant statue's arm, but still, it's a pretty cool scene. And it has a Burton-esque shot where Batman captures Mr. Freeze. Kind of makes me wish I had some of those Taco Bell toys around, though. A popsicle. Maybe grow a plant and a little thing to have. A little dome. <laughs> I forgot about Babin having to drag Robin. He's not Maxi Zeus. Oh god, Bane's in a grill outfit. Work. Oh my gosh. I like this chase scene. Sure, it's a bit ludicrous. Sure, they put ice through metal and drove through it, but hey, it's kind of cool looking. And finally, some damn action.
Now think if they had a full blown out car chase like Batman eighty nine, a little bit of returns with like Batman Begins, wow. I think what's getting to me is that it's a convertible and it's like a one seat convertible, so it's not like the Adam West Batman with the double seat convertible. He can make it. He's not going to make the jump. He's not going to make it. He's not going to make it. Oh, man. He just deactivated Robin's bike. He's going to be so mad. Redbird disengaged. I'll tell you what, though. kind of makes me want to watch Three Musketeers. Only because it's a better Chris O'Donnell movie. Whoa. They both crashed. Kind of like the... Like the part where the helicopter and Batman I love this. He's gonna freeze Batman thing and kill him. He ejects, glides, and oh my god. This is like an awesome Batman moment. I guess it's a good thing I had a convertible. Uh oh, yeah. Now this is very Batman Returns like. That's such a cool moment. Now that's a freaking Batman moment. Why can't the rest of the movie be like that? I say though, I like the Batcave in this. At least it's like a giant Batcave that actually looks like a Batcave. I feel like this would have been better with Val Kilmer, because he has some of that history and tension there from forever. Trust. Trying to find his brother, Wilfred. Alfred or Wilfred? I love this scene. Best scene in the whole movie here. Alfred and Bruce Wayne's conversation about death and him trying to stop it from happening again. And George Queen's like, but I can't, can I? And Alfred's like, none of us can. Oh, such an endearing scene. This is, I wish there was more scenes like this from the film. It's like somewhere deep down there are some little seeds of a good Batman film. Or a good film, period. You know, I wonder what it would be like if the series didn't take this turn, but at the same time, I'm kind of glad because without this, again, we would never have had the Dark Knight trilogy. I have to be thankful for that. Flashback where they're at uh, the Wayne's tomb. Uh-oh, Batgirl sneaking out again. Uh -oh, but Robin's in the know. Like, where were you at? Dun-dun-dun!
Dick Grayson. Look, there's more to her than meets the eye. Arkham Asylum. It's the bigger Arkham Asylum. We're gonna carry Mr. Freeze in a giant refrigerator. She just kept him in there. <laughs> you gotta love Arnold's little puns. You can't get out of that ice beam, though. You can't breathe, room temperature wise. Genius, but it makes you wonder why didn't it affect the whole room? That would have been cool if he tried to escape and then this happened in the hallway. For some reason, Arnold's Mr. Freeze in that moment kind of reminded me of the film Powder. Turkish Bath. Oh wait, is that Lazy Eye by the Goo Goo Dolls? They're going to be fighting the glow-in-the-dark Darth Maul gang. I have to say one thing though, these two Batman movies have some good soundtrack, uh, some good songs I mean in the soundtrack. The glow in the dark people, man. I have a feeling Joel Schumacher would have been better at making a Bad Beyond adaptation than Batman. I mean, as far as like the techno Gen X look to it, it's like a crazy rave on steroids. Every Poison Ivy comes with her own Bane action figure doll. Another cartoon sound. This is just a cartoon. Okay, I'm going to have to fast forward this because this is just too much. She grows her plants and then they're going to have him with his girlfriend. Well, she's actually kind of beautiful. I think she was like a real model. Plus, you also have her as a character that looks like the comic book characters. It's sad that you didn't have more of her because she's actually a big character in the comics. Out of his love interests, only seeing Poison Ivy only has one girl in his mind. And he's like, why did you call me Ivy? What? Like Chris O'Donnell's obsessed? Oh no, and then he finds out Bad Girl went out. It's a part where Coolio's there. With fun for me with my local plan. Now this part here with the bike chase, cool action, but you can definitely tell the guy did the Lost Boys did this. 
tick tock tick tick tock. Oh my god, it's like the Warriors meets a clockwork orange. Coolio! Gangster's Paradise. Thanks for gonna watch Dangerous Minds now. It'd be so 90s, but not in the best way. There's so many movies you can watch from a true definition of the 90s, but as far as music, Night the Rock's Bear is the way to go. Yeah. Little Metalhead Kid. Oh, that's cool. Rob, uh, Chris O'Donnell's Robin's there. He has the Robin helmet. He had that in Bad Forever. This is a good part of Moner Underworld. Good music. This has a very definite Bambion vibe. There's a little bit more serious of a movie there. For some reason, this reminds me of the Joker's gang from Bound Beyond. Good soundtrack, though. It's sad, the best sequences of this film have very little to do with Batman, but I love them. This might have been a better movie if they got Bane as a main villain. Like the comics, Batman was out of commission for the majority, and they had like Robin try to take over, and then he finds Batgirl and some other people. Man, it's sad though, this film pretty much almost killed everybody's career. The only one that really came out like unscathed was George Clooney. I didn't see Alicia Silverstone in much until like Diary of Wimpy Kid. Chris O'Donnell was kind of out of it until uh, NCIS. Arnold was in movies, he just, yeah, they weren't, they were getting progressively bad. And then it's T3 and then it's Governorship and then now coming back. And then, um, as far as anybody else, thank God for Quentin Tarantino and Uma Thurman. I didn't really see her have a resurgence until uh, Kill Bill. So yeah, I kind of did something to these people's careers for a while. Oh no, they're falling. He's in a catcher. So said, I got you. It's always saving people from upside down. He's robbing It's the anger. She like the thrill of it. I guess it's an excuse. It's like we're uh, Robin in the last one. The danger. And she's like she kept doing it since her parents died. Take the pain away. I guess it's. I mean, I, I understand it, but this is like. I don't know. Not cliche, but. It's like, okay, I guess. In the way that, like, Fast and Furious is about family all along. I'm like, I guess. <laughs> Alfred's sick. Robin's gonna realize that. Bruce Wayne's gonna know all along. I have to say, though, Stephen Amell kind of reminds me of Chris O'Donnell. So watching this, I'm like, I feel like watching Green Arrow. You notice that I say I feel like watching other movies or shows. It tells you something about this film.
He's not sick, he's dying. Serious moment here. The more human moments are so much better than the villains and the action set pieces in this. Hey, at least George Clooney's Bruce Wayne dresses all in black, so I'm like, yeah, that's kind of Batman. I really feel like his Bruce Wayne was really good. It's just his Batman was a little bit weaker. They're gonna have Poison Ivy come in. Oh wait, not yet. He's in a uh, Mr. Freeze is making a little ice, ice little thing with the clock, like in the animated series. I love it. She just made a Mr. Freeze movie by himself. So good. Oh yeah, Poison Ivy's gonna come in. She basically pheromone dusts the guys. And they're like, oh! And Mr. Freeze's like, who are you? Don't kiss her! Rare fat kiss in the comics. When she kisses somebody again, it's like an antidote. I don't know if it's all the comics. Oh look, it's Riddler and... Uh, Two Faces uh, costumes. There's a little bear. I wonder if that's Osito bear, uh, Bane's bear. I don't know if it is or not, but it's interesting. Now that would have been cool if we saw like I don't know Selena Kyle or like the penguin. Well, I'm always kind of on the boat, slow life. I've been impressed by you. In fact. Uh, okay, we're fast forwarding it again. They're gonna get out basically and escape. And then he's talking to Alfred Bruce. Oh. Alfred Duff and Pat Hingle are the only people who have been in all four of the Batman film anthologies. Freeze is broken. Snow cones, and then they're gonna discover poison ivy's working with him. I really do like the aesthetic of the bat suit here. If it wasn't for the nipples or the emblem, I really like the cow. And then they're gonna suffocate the police officers. And there's ludicrous scene. Oh, they're fighting Bane. Man, we've come far in 20 years, man. Just go from Batman to Robin to the first fight, hell, even the second fight of Dark Knight Rise between Batman and Bane, wow. First fight especially. First fight's brutal. More pheromone dust. Rob is going to be throwing an ice cream pretty soon. <laughs> Probably the best quote from him. Where are all the... Because why are all the beautiful ones homicidal chicks? It's just me. I love that. Oh wow, they're promoting action figures. Proof it's the greatest toy commercial.
Oh man, those are ugly green hands. It's like the lettuce. Hit him with a bar. Yeah, it hits Bane and that's it. Lights out. Oh man, he's mad now. Batman and Robin are gonna fight. Now he's throwing an ice cream. Teenagers. He's going solo. We'll have a Nightwing movie. Not. Nah. Then she's going to pull uh, Nora Freeze's plug saying she died. And they're going to rule the world. Now Alfred's really sick with McGregor Syndrome. Uh, a fake illness, but uh, McGregor Syndrome was based off uh, the last name of one of the producers. His name was McGregor. I think it's Peter McGregor. I may be wrong. Such a sad scene here. I like how Batman was able to figure this out. This one good thing they did. Alfred gets back real CD, then you have the observatory, then she's gonna go up to the bat signal. And Bane's gonna destroy the bat signal. Cool scene. They made it look more epic in the trailer though. Anyway, Barbara's gonna have to figure out what the password is, and it's gonna end up being Peg. But before she gets there, you have Bruce and Alfred talk here. So sad seeing Alfred in the state. You know, it's not the best ending it could have been, but at the same time with Alfred and Bruce and the whole flashbacks and how everything was, it is kind of a good bookend for the anthology, even though it's not near the quality it was when 89 came out. And it killed the Batman franchise for eight years. I mean, you just at the cartoons, but it was, it was scarce. Anyways, Peg, and then, oh uh oh you get to see all the blueprints, and then the Batman and Robin logo. And then Mr. Freeze is going to go ahead and go to the observatory of Freeze's city, and Bruce Wayne's is like, trust me. And then uh, Mr. Freeze takes over the observatory, he's going to freeze the city, and uh, then you have Batgirl. And, oh! Alfred, his consciousness is in the back computer. Cool scene though, I like it when she becomes a bad girl. Hell yeah, bad girl, suit up. To the back cave. I guess they didn't put any nipples on her suit. Oh look, a Robin signal. He's gonna go in there and poison Ivy's gonna be there. And then they're gonna kiss. She wants him to kiss her because she knows she can poison him. Oh, 
Oh no, he's gonna kiss her. Uh oh, he thinks she has him. He's like, I'm afraid rubber lips are immune to your charms. I love this moment. Then she's ticked off. She's like, how dare you? She just kissed him, I guess, since he took him off. Batman's there. Man, everybody has a pun in this movie. They're both trapped. What's gonna happen? Oh, Batgirl does the epic blast roof uh, crash. Kicks Poison Ivy's butt. <laughs> I like this fight between Poison Ivy and Batgirl. Whoa, they did a weird reverse motion thing with Rob in there. Whoa, she kicked her into the plant. Well, that does it for her. Only thing I don't like is about Batgirl. And it's like, Bruce, it's me. It's like awfully PC. Like, why not Batwoman or Batperson? I hate that. Then they're going to change suits because we all know it's a new action set piece. We have to have the right toys for this toy set. Although this little thing Batman's driving I like. It reminds me of the little vehicle that Michael Keaton had in Batman Returns. And plus I had that toy and it's pretty awesome. And then she's going to be in the motorcycle. He's going to freeze the city. And everybody's in a freeze. Even a dog who's like going to the restroom and a fire hydrant's frozen. How sad is that? Anyway. Oh, they're there. They got vehicles. Toy set. Batgirl looks cool though with the cow. It's very much like a nod to the 60s one. It would have been cool if they added the gold in there. Instead of silver. Now there's a hockey guy driving Freeze's vehicle. He's gonna use the reflector thing against him. We launched him. Wow, this actually looks like they're just driving toys. Robin saves back, girl. Oh, he reflected it back at him. Man, what's up with the blaring trumpets? Then they go up, and it's kind of like the scene where he goes up to the Riddler's lair, but it's going to be a freaking uh, solar system projection. All these planets. It looks like one of those space mattress sets from the 90s or like Pizza Planet from the Toy Story. 
eaters will follow them. I don't know, the Asian doctor guy, I keep thinking. He was uh, one of the Wayne Enterprises employees in Forever, but I keep thinking of him at, uh, at, in a moment where he's fighting Mr. Freeze, like, Dirty Fighter, Dirty Fighter! Now there's a satellite, which is also used in Smallville. Whoa! Now it's fight time. Oh, the fight in this is kind of restricted compared to the new movies. More CGI. Pretty much they fight on a giant telescope. Uh, Robbins is like, I got you, and Bad Girl saves him. He's like, No, I got you. Things in a crash. Get stuck. Bane has him. Now Batman and Mr. Freeze are fighting. I fast forwarded a bit again, guys, because my throat's kind of hurting now, and I just really want to get this over with. But it's on uh, 1 hour 48 minutes and uh, 20 seconds right now. It is not Bane's two bow. And he's gonna shrink to a little guy. Again, another reason why you shouldn't take steroids, children. They're fighting. Although this suit here, the silver reminds me of the sonar suit a bit. Which I wish they kept that suit. I don't know why they didn't. The sonar suit from Bad Forever? Oh, he puts a heater on him. The heat is off. The heat is on. Whoa, whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, your town. I don't know. It reminds me of Beverly Hills Cop, Gloom Frey, The Heat Is On. I should totally have a remix of that with George Clooney saying, The Heat Is On. Oh no, the satellites are going to be jammed from the relay beams. They're going to reflect the solar sun on there. I don't know. Anyway, they do that. Mr. Freeze is down below, and he blows up the telescope thing, so they can't do that. So he's like, no, and Batman saves the doctors, and then Robin and Batgirl are like, oh, let's pray he's okay, and they all go up. And uh, they thaw the city. Mr. Beefy from Little Nick, he gets to finish on the fire hydrant. So it's uh, 1 hour, 53 minutes, and uh, 32 seconds right now. Sad scene, but I like this because he ends up helping Mr. Freeze. And it's created some sympathy for him, even though he's more of a cheesy villain in this than the animated series. Kill me. Do it now. Do it now, Batman. Kill me now. What are you waiting for? Makes me want to see Predator. Oh, poor Mr. Freeze. But to give life, that's true power. That's true power. Power you want to make. I love this. Good message, even though... It's sad, you know, Spider-Man 3 and this aren't great films, but they have some good messages. It's just a shame that they weren't in great stories. I messed that up, guys.
The way you said, will you help me, doctor, kind of sounded a little bit like old William Shatner. Will you help me, doctor? Bones! I'm kidding now. Oh, those tubes are like light bulbs with liquid in them. Oh, very heartfelt there. Even though this isn't the best Batman film, pretty much almost killed Batman. I like how they help him. This would have been even stronger if they had like the whole heart of eye story. Then they're in their regular suits. Although at least it shows him wash off some of the eyeliner, so it's not going to be like Michael Keaton where he pulls off the mask and his, his eyes are okay. And then Poison Ivy's all psychotic. He loves me. He loves me not. And then he's just like, Arnold's going to be there. The suit looks awesome. He's like, winter has come at last. And then she's like, oh no, I'm doomed. Which I guess the guards are okay with that. Oh... The suit lit up in the dark. I am the salvation. I'm going to make your life a living hell. And I have come to make your life a living hell. Prepare my heart. <laughs> oh, no, that's awesome. I like Mr. Freeze in this. I don't think it's the best interpretation. It's miscast, but you gotta love some of the ice puns and just all the way out on some of the stuff. It's fun. Oh, they're waiting for Alfred, and he's gonna be like, I'm gonna be better, I'm gonna be better. Man, they really partied out. That pizza. What's that pizza, man? I think there's more pizza in this movie than a Ninja Turtles film. Makes me wanna have some pizza now. If I was by a Domino's, I'd go get it. They're open till 2. It's barely 12.55 right now. It's an hour and 58 minutes into the movie right now. Very end. We're gonna need a bigger cave. Family. And they're all together. Team. Like a build-up for another film, but it's never gonna come. Which I don't know why they need a bigger cave. I mean, that's a pretty big cave. I like it. It's back to normal. It's a happy family. <laughs> I believe I'm the one that gets back to town, but yeah, that was me. I did it all by myself. That was me. You are going back to school. She had to be sorry for me. <laughs> Partners? Partners. Partners. Epic little hand meeting moment. They're looking at Bruce. They'd be like, we're gonna need a bigger cave. And then the whole ending. Oh, three of them. But at least in this one, his ears don't wobble. They get into that awesome Smashing Pumpkins song. Dun 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 I don't know what the hell. Anyway, 20 years old, and now we get to that awesome beginning as the end as a beginning Smashing Pumpkins theme song. Anyway, I'm going to jam out to that. Anyway, if you made it this far, thank you for listening. I don't know how you did it. My throat hurts right now. I always love to do these podcasts. I talk a lot. But for some reason, when it's a podcast instead of a review, my throat hurts. Anyway, happy 20th anniversary to Batman and Robin. My personal feelings towards the film, I think it's the worst Batman film, and I don't like it because it killed Batman for eight years. But at the same time, without this film, I have to appreciate it now because without this film, we never would have had the genius of Christopher Nolan's Batman with Batman Begins, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises. So without this Batman, we may have never had the Dark Knight trilogy. So for that, I can... 
appreciate this film and look at it in a different way, even though it's nowhere near Batman, Batman Returns, or Batman Forever. Anyway, that is that. And, uh, yeah. It probably... I probably still feel the same in about another 20 years for its 40th. Who knows? We may get back to that campy state again. But, uh, yeah. I'm glad to see that Batman is alive and well again 20 years later. It made me wonder, but it's nice to see Batman is still alive and we can look back at this as the time it was, as the film it was, and appreciate what we have now. Anyway... For any poor souls who made it this far, thank you for listening. Now, this was a bit abridged, and uh, feel free to check out my other videos on the channel. Like, comment, subscribe, and I have a Batman retrospective on my channel. And then on my Dark Knight is Still channel, I'm going to have a Batman music video. So, feel free to check out some stuff there. Thank you for watching, as always, and hey, Freeze, I'm Batman. Till next time. Same Bat channel, same... No, never mind, I'm not going to steal their line. Okay. Till next time, children. Oh, wait. I totally forgot about Gotham City by R. Kelly. Yeah, that song is nothing like Gotham City. It's a peaceful place. Yeah, right. Anyway, yeah. I totally forgot about that. Anyway, till next time. Mm-hmm. <laughs>